Well, we have shared that our station is raising money all month long for the fight against breast cancer, and that money will go towards services to help those battling the disease and also funding ongoing research. And while early detection and treatment are key in saving more lives than ever, some groups of people are still at a high risk more than others. Here to share more about this this morning is Dr. Arif Kamal, the Chief Patient Officer with the American Cancer Society. Good morning, Dr. Kamal. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So first, let's begin with the research findings about breast cancer disparities. We know they are out there. They, they absolutely are, and you know we continue to see them widen in several different ways. So, for example, we, we just recently published, you know, there's about 300,000 women who are going to receive a breast cancer diagnosis uh, this year, of which about 10,000 will be in the state of North Carolina. And I'm just down the road from you in Chapel Hill, so I care a lot about our fellow North Carolinians. And, you know, what we know is that even though everyone's at risk and, and 300,000 will get it, not everyone has the same experience. What we know, for example, is that women who are black and persons of color, though they have slightly less incidence uh, or risk of cancer from, a, from being found from a screening mammogram, that they're 40% likely higher to die from that cancer. And we know that's related to several different barriers that exist. Some have to do with access to care, some have to do with access to the cutting edge treatments. And we, what we also importantly know is less enrollment in clinical trials. Those really cool new things that are out there women of color are less likely to be enrolled in that. And what we know is that leads to disparities in survival and other outcomes. Dr. Kamal, it's important to talk about these disparities and shine a light on them. What do we as a community do to help combat them? Well, I think that those interventions are at various levels. I mean, one, I think it's important for people to not feel alone when going through a cancer journey. You know, mm -hmm. the American Cancer Society, we have our National Cancer Information Center, which is our 24-7 hotline where any person can call us and ask the question, how do I best advocate for myself? That's the our 1-800-227-2345 number. And we have women calls all the time and say, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of friends or others around me who've been through this experience. How do I make sure I'm doing it right in terms of moving forward? And what I would also say is that, you know, women and their caregivers and their loved ones and their friends uh, should advocate for each other. I, I, I always encourage my patients to come to their appointment with others in tow, right? So that others can be good listeners for them because sometimes it's hard. There's so many details mm -hmm. we throw at people and can also bring up questions like, hey, you know, how do I know that, you know, my friend here, or my sister here is getting absolutely the best cutting edge treatment? What can you tell me about that? Because as I mentioned, we know there's a disparity there. And then lastly, it's around clinical trials. What we know is that women of color are less likely to be asked to be on a clinical trial, meaning that the, the trial exists, it's at the place that the person's at, but the clinician's just not making the connection that's there. And so, you know, having someone in the room or the patient themselves, you know, kind of raise their hand and go, is there a clinical trial that's right for me is a really important question that needs to be asked. And then lastly, at the health system level, every health system, cancer center, hospital, et cetera, should be paying really close attention to who they serve, where disparities exist, and making a really genuine effort to close those gaps by working with community partners to make sure everyone has an equal chance to be cured of, of cancer. Mm, and Dr. Kamal, what research, let's talk about research now, what research is out there or advancements in breast cancer treatment look promising in your opinion? Well, several, 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 several. I mean, you know, I think when people envision going through best breast cancer treatment, they're thinking about t being tired, losing your hair, being, you know, really nauseated. And, and, and that in and of itself kind of, I know when talking to my patients, gets them a little scared to go get a screening mammogram because it's kind of better to just not think about it at all. But the good news is with newer treatments now, they're targeted. They have generally have less sort of side effects that people classically think about. Many of them are oral. Many of them are spaced apart. It's just a different experience than where people were five years ago. And mm -hmm. there's more treatments for cancers that, that weren't there before. So what I encourage everyone to do is go get a screening mammogram, recognizing that I think cancer treatment now is gentler, more personalized, and a better experience than it was when most people sort of visualize what that looks like. It's been a pleasure to speak with you, Dr. Kamal. Thank you for your time here this morning. Thank you, thank you. And thank folks at home, if you would like to learn more, we invite you to visit cancer.org.